Radio Namaste is brought to you by your host, the blue collar goddess, Sarah Nash, and a small crew of guest personalities determined to amuse, entertain, and occasionally astonish you. And now, Radio Namaste, a different brand of enlightenment streaming live across this galaxy and probably a few more. Thursday. Yeah, it is Thursday. And if you're listening in live, you'll know it's Thursday. Otherwise, it's just sort of sunny on this side of the Olympic National Forest in the United States of America. And this is Sarah Nash is your host. You're listening in to the Radio Namaste on the Om Times Radio Network, bringing you enlightenment. The Blue Collar Goddess Way. By the way, I have quite a few clients who are making the romance plunge. And I've sent them to the Om Times Dating Network, Ascending Hearts. That's AscendingHearts.com. I checked it out. I looked at it. A lot of these people out there seem to uh, really have a handle on, you know, having a mature and adult relationship without, you know, lots of drama and histrionics. So go over there. Check it out uh, if you've got late, if you're late in on the uh, uh, spring fever. Anyways, remember to hit me up on our Twitter. That's at Radio Namaste with the hashtag Blue Collar Goddess. And you're going to get the opportunity to be in the drawing for a free one hour Skype session. I'm going to put all those love notes in a hat. Zen Master Ted will snag one out. And Motorized Millie will announce the winner at the end of each month when she joins me as my guest host. (laughs) <laughs> I love that part. I love that part. Last time it was Grandmother Alaya, and that that was interesting because she's a, she's also a uh, she has a show here on the Ohm Times Radio Network, and I love her. She's amazing. Anyways, another person that I really love is my surprise guest today, Eagle Spirit. Um, the guys who were supposed to come on the show today, uh, Sam and Ben Mendelson from Savannah Spirit, um, one of two things happened. Either the surf was really, really good, (laughs) and I didn't check the surf report, (laughs) or they really were stuck in in this this meeting that they, they couldn't wiggle out of. And I keep trying to get these guys on because conscious commerce is really an important part of my process. Um, I've been, I've owned stores, I've owned restaurants, I've, I've had the opportunity to be a part of a lot of conscious commerce. And I think it's important for us to uh, hang out with each other and, and hold each other up. Um, by the way, you already know that you don't have to download an app to get live streaming access to this conscious community, okay? If you are listening in live. But you do want to check out the archives for past shows because the past show with Eagle Spirit is going to kind of sort of be the um, the the what do they call that words Zen master Ted? What is the, the pre the uh, prologue (laughs) to, to this conversation? Because really um, there's a lot going on in the world today. And uh, for those of us who are really tapping into that interstellar ESP channel, and we're really, you know, tuning in as one for global consciousness, we begin to feel And we began to sense in ways that we never have before. And I don't want to waste any more time because this is honestly a universal heads up uh, emergency empath session. It is my superpower. There's this really cute uh, meme going around saying, you know, uh, yeah, I wear my heart on my sleeve. It's my superpower. So um, shoot, I forgot to turn off my sounds. I apologize for that. How unprofessional. But anyways, Eagle Spirit, how are you? Eagle Spirit. Did we lose her? Oh, we lost her. I knew this was going to happen because it's Mercury retrograde. <laughs> we're in the shadow period. Um, we're going we're gonna to try and get her back on this. So hold on two seconds. Um, Zen Master Ted, do you want to do that? Do you want to see I'm if you can add her? Trying to see if I can add her. But she hasn't been dropped from the call yet officially, so... All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and um, let's see. How can we do this? I'm going to go ahead and drop her, and I'm going to bring her back because it's like magic. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to add her. Let's see what happens now. dun 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 do, 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 do. I can't find her in my list. What is happening? <laughs> oh, you know what? 
she's showing as not available because she was on the call with me. Here we go. Let's see if we can add her. Let's see if we can do this now. This would have, you know, this would have been one of those things that um, with, with Ben and Sam for Savannah Spirit, it would have been interesting because I was going to have to put them on speakerphone anyways. But I'm trying to get Eagle Spirit on the call, but she, since she's probably on a do not disturb, she's not getting the, the heads up on it. I'm going to try it one more time. I'm going to try it one more time. Bum, bum, ba, da, bum, bum, ba, da. <laughs> it's live radio. I wish I had like mariachi singers in the background or something so that we could, we could make it uh, work out a little bit better. See, she's still on a do not disturb. Try to bring her up on Facebook. Yeah, try to bring her up on Facebook. Shoot her off a message. Um, tell her that, uh, let's just go ahead and add her again. Let's see if we can add her. We're going to say, add to the call. Add to the call. There we go. <laughs> Hi. Holy moly. I know, right? It's all those EMFs in the air. I, I That's what I was thinking. Like something really big. And it started about mm, an hour and a half ago. Did you notice it? Oh, yeah, I did. Absolutely, I did. That's why I was the, when I when I texted you, I was like, you know, I can anthropomorphize as a toothpick. <laughs> but my, my life. Alex and I, we, we feel each other. And they were going, hey, you got some extra selenite in the house, man. You might want to put it in the office, Sarah. It was like, all right, yeah, I can do that. Let's that's, sit around. <laughs> that's too funny because I went upstairs for, into my healing space and I grabbed one of the big chunks of selenite and brought it down to the laptop that I'm calling you from. Are you kidding me? I'm not kidding. I lit the incense. I lit the candles. Um, but I grabbed the selenite. So I'm going to keep gripping onto it. And if we do lose each other. We'll um, get Zen Master Ted to send me a message for a number that I can call back in and we'll do it on a landline. Well, yeah, I could probably put you on speakerphone. Um, I'm actually going to leave my, my sounds on. Um, okay. Normally I, I'm looking at a script, but today I don't have a script. So this way I'll know whether or not you've been dropped from a call. Okay, um, typically I have all my sounds off, but it's, it's actually fortuitous that I forgot today. Otherwise it would known that you weren't there so and there uh, you go again yeah <laughs> it keeps happening yeah we've, we've got you going in and out yeah well let's not let's not waste any time tell yeah. us tell us about okay I know how I felt on Monday and Sunday and mm -hmm. I was just chalking it up to like oh I've already set myself up to be lazy because it's Mother's Day and I authentically get to say oh bring me peeled grapes and bonbons <laughs> And luckily you have somebody who does that for you. But most of us need to um, look at why, you know, we can use Mother's Day as an excuse or our birthday or a yeah, Friday or whatever. But many more of us are feeling these waves of anxiety, of nauseousness, of vertigo, dizziness. Um, there's some really big energetic whammies happening. And for, for those of us who, well... I'm not going to include myself in that because I've been on this path for over 30 years now. And, and it, they say it takes five years to become an expert in anything. So I'm like a triple expert <laughs> patting myself on the back. Yes. But for those of, of my, my beloved brothers and sisters who have just begun walking this path of ascension and awareness and consciousness, it can be pretty scary. Well, and you know what's interesting is I find when I'm working with empaths and fellow sensitive souls, they are so wonderful and they're so caught up in all the latest spiritual literature that they are ready to take responsibility for everything. They're right in, they're, you know, ready to reclaim their power. The problem is they're taking on responsibility for a lot of stuff that's not theirs. Like what? Well, for example, you're walking along and let's say you're out and about and all of a sudden you feel a wave of sound or a wave of tiredness. 
what happens with uh, unempowered empaths especially is they go, oh, I must not have eaten the right food. I didn't, you know, chant the right number of times. I didn't like there's all this stuff. And very rarely do they stop and take time to see whether or not this sensation, what I call an energetic cue, is actually even theirs. And with the energetic shifts going on in the earth right now, like what you were talking about happening on Monday and Tuesday, all the stuff happening in Hawaii, in Chile, in um, Nepal, those of us who are physical empaths, we're feeling that. And so it won't get initially addressed by us, us becoming more responsible. What we actually need to do is up the self-care like to a radical level we need to rest when we're tired eat when we're hungry and the foods that we're really craving at this time not what we think we should it's not about shoulding on ourselves right now and um really listening and so that's why being able to access the soul whispers of your heart um are so darn important especially for us sensitives right now well, how do we identify, I know we're getting ready to go to a break here really soon, but how do we identify something? Because I'm going to tell you very quickly an experience that I had on May 5th, which was May Day. No, that's Cinco de Mayo. I think it was May 2nd. Whatever May Day is, I was, I was in this horrible, cranky mood, and it came out of nowhere, and it was, it was building and building and building and building. And even Sylvia Henderson, who is a, a fellow host on the Om Times Radio Network, we, we spoke about it briefly. But then my daughter called, and she was like, hey, Mom, I can't come out. Um, the the ferry is going to be late coming out from Seattle. It's May Day. And she mm -hmm. said, they're rioting in Seattle. And what? the minute she said that, I have to tell you, there was this, this, I just, it was like, I could just take off this heavy coat because I knew what it was. Yeah. And it was because of you, I am paying more and more attention to, to that. And I have a, I have a, a witness here. He watched, he watched the, the visible change in me and we're going to go to a break. We'll come right back. best of holistic spiritual and conscious world om times radio iom fm hi my name is monica and i'm the host of co-creating now give yourself an opportunity to connect with your all-knowing higher self and manifest joy love and peace together every tuesday 11 a.m eastern being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. What if business could be fun? What if business is the adventure of living? What are you choosing? Where do you do business that makes it easier, more fun, or more joyful for you? We'd love to see where you do business. Connect with us on Instagram at Joy of Business or Twitter at Joy of Business and share your pictures with hashtags Business Done Where and Joy of Business. Let's change the world with business. Hi, this is Angela Levesque, host of Entanglement Radio. Join me Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern for inspiring conversations with visionaries in spiritual science and conscious healing. Entanglement Radio, Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern. Transcendent talk for the conscious mind. Conscious media for conscious minds. Ohm Times. And we're back. Hi. Hey. <laughs> I'm sitting here holding on to my selenite too going oh <laughs> so am I I've got it in both hands it's all nice good. nice <laughs> um one of the things that I wanted to to ask you about though because I know I have a, a few very special people who are listening in today um I I emailed them at the beginning of of this show but it's about your workshops that you're giving because I think I think if I 
if I know anything, I, I know that you're suddenly going to get this influx of people who are going to be like, all right, how do I talk to you? So how do we talk to you? Well, definitely visit me at my website, eaglespiritjourneys.com. Um, I'm also on um, Skype at Eagle Spirit Journeys, at Twitter at ES Journeys, or you find me on Facebook. There's my personal page, and there's also an Eagle Spirit Journeys business page. And both of those I post daily positive messages, lessons and teachings, um, things that are helpful for sensitive souls and that just make you feel yummy. Yeah. You know what else made me feel yummy is I don't know why I didn't do this sooner, but you sent me a song, the Unity song. Mm -hmm. I literally, I, I, I had it on repeat and I'm like, okay, that's it. I bought your CD. Um, you've got a few CDs, don't you? Um, it's the one CD. And what I love about that one is it's another example of when you get called to do something that you have that quiet soul whisper inside and it just won't stop. And um, I had clients ask, they like the chanting that I do in sessions or when I'm out giving talks. So that CD has chanting on it. It has original music like the Unity song, which has a marvelous story about it. Because really, that was a download as uh, on December 22nd, 2012. And uh, so the end of the Mayan calendar. And there I was sitting on a beach in Hawaii. And the song just arrived. And I totally agree with you. There's something haunting about it that allows you to feel connected. And when we're going through these energetic shifts and changes, it's amazing how alone we can feel. That's the one thing I find over and over again. I hear when um, people attend the Empath 101 program that I created, when they can sit in a room with fellow sensitive souls and find that they're not alone, it is such a relief. You know that is that is my my uh, that is my focal point for the White Light Express, which is my healing ministry, which is all about the power of positive focused intention. I don't want people to feel alone. One of the things that Zen Master Ted and I were talking about during the break were um, highly sensitive people, which is different than people who are empaths. There's a difference between an HSP and a sensitive and an empath, and I want you to go over that again. But HSPs, the actual HSPs, the highly sensitive people, you know, we have a tendency to say I'm sorry for things that we're not hours to be sorry for mm -hmm. and and we're also you know we're aware but we're not responsible and and um zen master ted does hsp notes online but um can you tell us the difference between one more time i know this is rudimentary and it's like kindergarten for you but um can you tell us the difference between just being sensitive and empathic well, you know, not to say it's rudimentary at all, because one of the biggest awarenesses I've had in this past year is where traditional literature, and I mean, this really is a research topic. It's not an airy, fairy, new age concept, but um, they, they used to say that only 5% of the population were empaths. So an even greater heightened sensitivity to everything around us than what an HSP might be. But now it's becoming more and more clear to me that all of us are empaths. It's just a matter of what our level of sensitivity and consciousness about it is. And so an empath truly is someone who can stand in the shoes of another. So when we see something happening or hear about something happening, um, it's not that we become empathetic about it and go, oh, or sympathetic about it. Oh, there, there. That's, you know, that's pretty tough. And we can just leave it. We feel it and we feel it deeply. And when I'm working with um, fellow empaths, the very first day of the Empath 101 program during the intensive, which is normally done in person, um, we look at the different types of empaths because some of us get our energetic cues, these awarenesses, on different levels, whether it's on the physical level, the emotional, the mental, or the spiritual. And so really, it's in the past they've said the highly sensitive person, and I know Zen Master Ted may want to jump in here too, um, the highly sensitive person it is one level and you take it up a notch to a, a, a greater connection and depth of everything to an empath, I'm starting to question that really. And and where we problematized being an empath, I really think that's going to be how we make this beautiful shift, what some call ascension, into a, a better world. 
we need to understand that what's going on around the world or with our neighbor or with ourselves is all the same. And that global consciousness, that that connecting point, that connecting point where we are as one, Mm -hmm. I think that empath, um, the the capabilities of within each of us to to step into the shoes of another and to and to feel their pain. And, Mm -hmm. you know, they say a burden shared is half a burden. And, and see, I totally agree. And that's why I've always had a problem with this idea of let's just put a bubble around ourselves. Let's just put a mirror around the other person. We cannot separate ourselves from the other. There is no self and other. We are all one. And don't you think that occasionally, uh, for me anyways, and, and, and perhaps this is why I need to attend more of your workshops. And <laughs> oh, it's a dona. oh, I'm actually going to be in Denmark. I'm going to be turning 50 on a different continent. Otherwise, oh. I would be in Sedona, actually. That, that's interesting that you should say that. But I, I think we need to make it happen in Seattle then. I think all right. Let's let's just do that. We're going to get our heads together. Okay, everyone, you heard it here. Yeah. We're going to we're going to get our heads together. We're going to have an Empath 101 workshop here in Seattle. Um well, we're not in Seattle. We're actually in Port Townsend, which is actually a beautiful place for empaths, which is one of the reason why Zen Master Ted and I are here. But Ooh, oh wow, shiny. I forgot what I was going to say. Let's do it at your place. Okay, we can do that. Woohoo. We were talking about HSPs. HSPs. And right, okay, so I'm sorry. It's like I, I have like they say that dogs have like ninety second memories. Mine's sixty seconds. So they should do studies with regard to dog brains and things. But the HSP element with regard to an empath and, and then then moving forward, I think that as we begin to understand that we have this beautiful gift within each of us, mm-hmm. um what happens with me is that I get angry. Okay, my go to sensation, my survival, the way I've managed to get through the hell that I've been through. And and sincerely, my childhood was horrific. I was raped, sodomized, neglected, abandoned, starved, sent here, sent there. It was pretty darn awful. And I've managed to survive because I was angry. Now that I have managed to move from point A to point B and anger is no longer my survival skill, what I'm also now now dealing with his grief all these sensations and energies now i'm i've i think i'm pretty enlightened i still have a ways to go i mean i know how to change a light bulb in my consciousness but we need you we need you to teach us how to protect ourselves without putting ourselves in a bubble how do we do that well i i appreciate you saying that because i really the bubble technique i don't think works and, and as I said in the last time we, ch- we chatted is the problem with the bubble technique is if your fields are not clear, you have now contained everybody else's energetic karma droppings into your own field and you're stuck walking around with it. So that's a problem. And, and that's why we rather than disconnect, we need to ground and get back in our bodies. We need to feel safe to be present. And for those of us like yourself, or like others who've had some pretty challenging things happen growing up, um, we haven't felt safe, but, but we need to. And that's why in Empath 101, I share over 20 different tips and tools to get us back in the body. And one of them is to you know connect to those feelings and find out what's ours and what's not ours so that we don't get stuck carrying around things and com- come back into the present and back into our power. When my daughter and I attended your workshop at the Women of Wisdom Conference a few years ago, she walked out of there, and this, and I actually wrote it down, and I found this, and I wanted to share it with you. She said, Mom, for the first time, I don't feel broken. I feel blessed. Whoa. Oh, that gives me shivers. And I meant to tell you that. I'm really glad I get to share that with you, you know, in, in a public arena. But I thought we need to give that to Eagle Spirit. You're not broken. You are blessed. And, and it's oh, changed I- her life. Yeah, I absolutely believe that. I think, that, see, the problem is most of us who are sensitives, whether it's HSPs or empaths, because um, I think we're more connected than, than what titles, which sort of foster a separation, suggest, um, is that somehow we've 
been told there's something wrong with us. And I truly believe that it's a spiritual blessing. It's a gift to be sensitive. I often say it's like we're canaries in a coal mine. And we know that something's going on before anyone ever tells us. And that's why I think it's super it's important. Really technicolor. Right. Yeah. Well, as an HSP, not only am I dealing with the fact that everybody around me is either sad or happy or, or dealing with a, a catastrophe such as what is the horrific, uh, you know, the earthquakes in Nepal and the suffering there, um, it, you know, as as an empath, we have to deal with the emotional and possibly physical and possibly mental um, tsunamis that happen. And I don't mean that was sort of a, a Freudian slip there with regard to, you know, the word tsunami, but I speak in metaphors. But um, and then as an HSP, not only do we have if, if you happen to be a highly sensitive person and that's an HSP, I wish they came up with a different name for HSP as opposed to like a highly uh, I don't know something. We need to come up with some with something else because Elaine Aaron is releasing a movie with uh, Alanis Morissette as the, one of the spokespeople about HSPs. But um, a, as an empath, you know, you have the the physical sensations and the emotional sensations and the mental sensations. We, we, if you happen to have the HSP trait, which you're born with, okay. Um, you're also dealing with the color green on the trees and the, the bag floating in the wind and, you know, the sparkles of the, of the water on the dewdrops. And I mean, it suddenly everything becomes this technicolor, overwhelming um, and quite amazing world. What I want to talk about when we get back from break is what people can do in the workplace if they're like out and about and they're doing their thing and all of a sudden they're hit with something they know is not theirs. What to do? Okay, sounds good. We'll see you after the break. All right, awesome. And we're waiting for the music, and we're waiting for the music, and we're waiting. We can sing. We can let's, sing. Let's just chant. Let's just, um. Um. <laughs> okay. You know, the live radio, I don't know. I don't, I don't hear any music. Do you hear any music? Oh, now I hear music. Yes. I'm on a global clock here, you know that? They're wrong. We're right. (laughs) Bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Matt Connerton here. Join Jen Coffee and I twice a week for Matt Connerton Unleashed, a political talk show that's a little different than what you're used to. No liberal or conservative agenda here, just an honest dialogue about truth and how things really work in the world of politics. Matt Connerton Unleashed, every Tuesday and Thursday night at 11 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. As difficult as it is to believe, there are places in Africa where human traffickers sell albino children and their body parts for use in magic rituals. Humanity Healing International is actively working in Uganda to change this paradigm. The Albino Rescue Project finds albino children who are at risk and places them in safe schools and environments where they can learn and grow free from fear. To learn more or to sponsor a child, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Do you have time to read that inspiring book or that blog post you've been meaning to get to? In your busy world, how do you improve yourself and keep your life going? I'm Lisa Kay, and my Between Heaven and Earth radio show can transform your life just by listening. Be uplifted with inspiring topics, positive stories, and ideas that really work. Between Heaven and Earth radio is conscious living for your soul every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern Time. A conscious lifestyle for a mindful life. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. I've just spent the last minute synchronizing my watch with the global walk. (laughs) I'm like, 
Global time versus OM time. Well, just to remember, it's just like synchronizing our energies with the global as well. I think that's a really nice, actually, symbol of what we're trying to do here today. I think so too. What happens when you're sitting at work or you're sitting or you're somewhere and, and let's face it. I mean, I'm very blessed because I get to work from home. I get to write from home. I, you know, I've worked very hard to get to this, this, this place because for many, many years I was in the service industry and I had to, to put on that mask. I had to put on that mask and say, hi, how can I help you today? <laughs> you know, and, and working in, in, you know, as a credit analyst and, and, and doing the corporate thing, I, you know, I ran the gamut, but there was always a part of me that was just, you know, tying a knot at the end of my rope every day and swinging. What, ha- if I had... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've got the visual now. Thanks. Yeah. No, but it's true. And, and it's like, it, I, if you... I think it's so important that people have the opportunity to tap into the information that you have, because if I knew then what I know now, mm. so, you know. Well, it's, it's interesting that you say that you've created this wonderful environment for yourself to work from. And I think it's really important. That's the next video that's going to come out on my YouTube channel where I've been talking about empaths. I want to talk about empaths and environment because it's very, very important to us. And it can make us wonderful employees or self-employed people if we put ourselves in a good environment. Um, Because empaths, we're able to focus so much easier than the average bear. You know, um, because we, we have great attention to detail because things stand out for us. We become one with things. We know when there's problems in the office with coworkers. We're able to make wonderful managers because we really care about the people, primarily because we know if our staff is happy and our coworkers are happy, we'll feel a whole heck of a lot better. Um, but when we get hit with things, we need to take a step back and again, discern, this is, this is my favorite word, really discernment, discern what is ours and what somebody else's. And sometimes we need to, um, be sure that we're creating timeouts and space for ourselves. And if we're not self-employed and working from home in the office, that means a washroom break. I don't care if you have to go to the washroom, just go out or or take a walk around the building if you're able to do that and just take a few moments to reconnect with yourself on all four levels because you may have found that you've been playing energetic bumper cars with somebody and you're carrying along somebody else's stress or strain that you're not responsible for and talk about those four levels okay if we have here we are Imagining we're sitting across from each other and and we can see the bodies and and everyone can do that. But what the empath is very, very aware of as they become more skilled is we're also not just a physical body, but there's about an inch and a half off from there is the physical energetic body. And most people are aware of that. You know, if somebody sort of sneaks up behind you and the hairs on the back of your neck rise, you know somebody is close and in your fields. That's your physical energetic body. A few inches up from there is the emotional energetic body. So that's where you're feeling, if you're an empath who's most sensitive on that level, you're not only feeling your emotions, um, but you may be feeling everyone else's as well. Further out from there is the mental energetic body. That's where all of your woulda, shoulda, couldas are, all the unresolved stuff. And out from there is, is the spiritual energetic body. And so being able to clear and connect on all four levels allows you to feel grounded and rooted and comfortable where you are so that you can be out and about and in a a work environment and, and in a living situation where you're not isolating yourself. Because, you see, it really doesn't work for empaths. We can run away as far as we want You know, to a little cabin on the top of a mountain, we are still going to feel things. And this does not make us frail. It does not make us defective or weak. This sensitivity is actually a strength because we know what's going on. And often we'll have the solution a lot quicker and more easily than someone who's not so tapped in. And so on the job and wherever we are, It's very important that we honor our energetic levels 
And that means resting when we're tired, eating when we're hungry, drinking lots and lots of water so we can move that energy mm-hmm. that we're picking up on. That's where the self-care comes into. Absolutely. But- I wanted to ask you, what is your, what is, I know that you light incense because incense is wonderful and it, it fills the air with, you know, a lovely scent, but what has been your experience with certain, and I, I'm not going to talk about brand names right now because I actually, I can think of two people that I would love to promote at the moment, but mm-hmm. um, what has been your experience with say um, essential oils and aromatherapy and, and sort of, you know, the, those uh, colloidal sprays that they put in just, you know, to surround your auric field what has been your experience with those because I myself have had some pretty decent um, in fact on World Labyrinth Day I had a spray that I was using on people as they walked into the labyrinth with uh, it was a Palo Santo uh, spray but what has been your experience I was just going to talk about Palo Santo I was speaking in Edmonton um, talking about empaths and this lady had just come back from Peru And so at the end of the talk, she came up to me and she said, I was guided to bring this Palo Santo for you. And what I found was when I burn that, when I'm doing hands-on energetic work with people, I always know that a past life is going to come up because I do soul retrieval work as well. And the Palo Santo seems to open that door. So I find I use different scents, whether it's essential oils or whether it's smudging or burning incense. I use different sense depending on what I'm doing and one of my favorite things to burn um, for the last maybe year and a half is frankincense interesting because I I discovered a frankincense incense that I've been using on the the white light express healing grid and altar um, and you know I wanted to talk about healing as a result of you know an empath for those of us I I have um, uh, well, oh my goodness, my very best friend in the world, she's a Reiki master teacher, but she was constantly absorbing the illnesses of the people that she was uh, doing Reiki on. Um, how do you, how would you, I, I know what she did, but how would you go about helping somebody who is a natural empath who is also a Reiki master? Well, I think, again, it comes to discernment, which a Reiki master is going to be excellent at already if they stop and ask whose stuff they're carrying. Um, It's magnetizing to them for a reason. And like many of this is this might sound a little harsh to some people, but like many of the difficult experiences we have, there are gifts in that. And so absorbing another's energy could be a wonderful way to explore boundaries One of the things I do when I have someone on the table, as soon as they come into my healing space, is I'm going to do the clearing prayer, which um, I've shared on my website. I've shared it on Facebook. And if we need to put that up again on Radio Namaste, just let me know about that. Um, I use the clearing prayer because that's quite helpful. Um, I also use smudging. Um, Years ago, because I've been doing this for over 20 years now, uh, years ago, I would make sure I showered. I would, I would actually change my clothes after clients um, because natural fibers will hold the energy of other people. And so if you've happened to have taken on energy by clearing the, the clothes, by doing um, a shower and a visualization is a nice way to imagine, for example, standing underneath a beautiful waterfall and allowing the energy to wash away what is not in harmony with you, what what you've picked up. Those types of visualizations and actual physical physical actions can clear your energetic fields. But you're you know it, we keep coming full circle back around to self care, and and that's why the um, Empath One Hundred One. We start with the one day intensive where you're learning about discernment and what kind of empath you are and meeting fellow sensitive souls. But it's the four-week online program where you get all the different tips and tools and opportunities to explore your level of sensitivity and what you need so that you can personalize what you need for self-care. And it's going to change over time because we are energetically changing. I'm sure you've, you've heard stories of this too. Some of us who are sensitive, like people are physically changing. Rib, rib cage moving, brain and skull areas moving. Like it's, it's fascinating. 
the energetic shifts that we're going through are actually having physical ramifications. Well, as they should, it's the evolution of the physical body uh, with regard to the spiritual body. It is, it is, you know, this is not, I truly believe that this will all be explainable by pure physics and science in another hundred years. In another hundred years, people will, again, like I, I love saying this, but they're going to call us doctors of transdimensional communication. People who are these rescue mediums who can understand that, that energy, because you're a rescue medium as well. Yes, yeah. And and this energy does become trapped and and it's very difficult to explain to somebody who's like, you know, you don't have to be religious. You don't have to be, you know, label it as limbo or 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 whatever you want, but I know for a fact, in fact, motorized Millie and I just we did quite on the spur of a mo uh, last week we a young a beautiful young woman came in because she saw Millie's light. And and wrapped herself around Millie, and and it was it was a rescue moment. Together we did this. So, as an empath, we have this capability to be discerning. We get to say, "This is mine. This isn't mine." Um, we get to go here. We get to go there with that. But nevertheless, we are still at the end of the day. Um, we. <laughs> at the end of the day we have to sit there and remind ourselves that we are not broken we are blessed yes absolutely and it's interesting too what i'm finding as as these energetic shifts are happening things are bubbling up to the surface for empaths and and for each of us and sometimes it's and that's where the soul retrieval work comes in because it can be Issues and patterns that we've been carrying across lifetimes that are bubbling up to be healed and released now so that we can move forward and really fulfill our divine purpose. Well, spiritual response therapy, uh, which I'm a, pr a practitioner of spiritual response therapy, teaches us that appro approximately 98% of our issues are as a result of carrying on information in our cellular structure with regard and in our DNA. Uh, mm -hmm. with regard to past life events and mm -hmm. this is this doesn't have to be one of those uh oh look now i have music <laughs> <laughs> oh shall excellent we, shall we ohm into the commercial let's do it let's oh. ohm love ohm Conscious lifestyle to your world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Join Elliot Jolish, the business therapist, each Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern for the Elliot Jolish Hour as he interviews business experts on your behalf. And you're invited to email your business questions to questions at ecjgroup.com for answers live on air every Tuesday at 5 p.m. Eastern on the Elliot Jolish Hour. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Simone Millicis would like you to know that business can be fun, which is why she wrote the book, Joy of Business. What if you could have the joy of business rather than the stress and struggle? Most of the time, the only thing stopping you from a thriving business is you. In the Joy of Business book, Simone gives you access consciousness tools and pragmatic ways to get out of your own way and to create the business, life, and living you know is possible and beyond what this reality says is achievable. Business is joy. It's creation. It's generative. It can be the adventure of living. You can purchase your copy of the book through Amazon or Joy of Business website, www.accessjoyofbusiness.com. Hi, this is Angela Levesque, host of Entanglement Radio. Join me Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern for inspiring conversations with visionaries in spiritual science and conscious healing. Entanglement Radio, Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern. Transcendent Talk. For the conscious mind. Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. 
Eagle Spirit. Yes, ma'am. One of the things that I was thinking about during the break is that as, as, because I, <laughs> okay, words, I have so much going on in my head. I need to slow down. Okay, just... I think empaths are sort of a cosmic emergency warning system for wow. the world. I mean, when we, we have this internal capability to do, to do a, 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 a check and so we 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 are those canaries in the coal mines we but we are the cosmic emergency warning system and it is our opportunity to join others in that flower of life symbol too for prayer because it in whether you want to call it prayer or meditation or positive focused intention i think we are the one we are the leaders and you my dear i know you're going to laugh at this cuz I, I said it before but to me you remind me of of the moses of the empaths <laughs> you know it's like i'm going to lead my people out of darkness and into freedom and it's like you look really good in your birkenstocks baby <laughs> you know what makes me laugh i know that there's a listener out there brian i'm giving a shout out to you who many years ago said girl you just got to find your people <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's your tribe, and and that's just it. You know, I tell people that they need to find people who love their inner Muppet and surround themselves with people who love their inner Muppet, but also your inner minion. <laughs> yes. Well, and I'm just, I'm, I feel blessed to be listening within and to having the courage. It took me years and years to have courage to follow my path. And even to the point of this radio show today, um, we didn't know I was going to be here until a few days ago. But it, it's where we need to be because someone's listening out there who might have a very limiting belief about their sensitivities and their path. And I'm so glad that we're here just to give them a big hug from Radio Namaste and from me at Eagle Spirit Journeys so that they know that they're not only okay, they're fantabulous and, and they're meant to be this way and they do have purpose in being here. Absolutely. The, the sensitivity thing, I, for so often in my life, I heard, what's wrong with you? Are you bipolar? Do you, you should go take a pill. Why are you so sad? Why are you so happy? I mean, those kinds of, of, of judgmental uh, comments that were by well-meaning people who said that they loved me as well. They would, oh, are you on your period, Sarah? Are you PMSing? You know, that was, that was always the big one. Don't get me started. <laughs> yeah, there must be something wrong with you because you're having an emotion and it doesn't match up with the, the scene. <laughs> Do you know, it's interesting about emotions and, and how we've been trained to disconnect from them. It's very efficient when you're trying to control a population if they feel disconnected, if they distrust their inner wisdom, if they're busy, busy all the time. But when we get quiet and grounded and connected and can really check in, we can be in alignment with our truth. And it's from that place that we can tap into our creativity, to, to our inspired thoughts, and we can really make this a better world I, and I think that's what we're here to do and and that's why I love the word you used cosmic emergency warning system um, I, I, I'll say it as positively as possible we're just here to remind people how wonderful they are and if we move from that place we would not harm each other we would not say the things about ourselves or others if we knew that we're all divine and we're perfect the way we are you know, I was reading the uh, Desiderata. Is that how you say it, Zen Master Ted? The Desiderata? Mm -hmm. that, that you are perfect. You are yeah. here for a reason. Um, I, I don't remember the exact words on it, but essentially, you know, just like the, the, the trees and the rocks and the flowers, you, you know, you're, you have a right to be here too. And go, uh, can I just interrupt for a second? Cause when you're sure, speaking, yeah. I that was on a framed copy of that was on my grandparents wall and I was always taken by that from the age of a, of a very small child because it was you know amidst all the noise of that surrounds you amidst all that turmoil that you're okay and to carry on and carry forth in faith and and so that particular prayer I think is absolutely beautiful 
It thank is, you so much for, for mentioning that. Oh, well, thank you for, it seems to me, okay, haha, as I sit here and I look at this, you and I have, we do a lot and we, we think a lot at, at, pretty much down the line the same way as do a lot of these empaths out there. It's like, it's not just, oh, gee, I like sandwiches. You do too. <laughs> you know, there, there are a lot of similarities and a lot of, I'm as a Jungian analyst, um, I know to look for, for the synchronicities. Mm -hmm. And I think that that also helps us as empaths feel less alone because it is more than just, oh, gee, I like sandwiches. It's, hey, I went and got my selenite. Oh, wow, me too. Too. Hey, I grew up reading, you know, this this piece of, of poetry, prayer, prose that shaped my my thought process. Really, me too. You know, it's it's more than I just like the color green. It's like, hey, this has been my life experience, and this is how I survived. And we can validate and and authenticate each other, and then begin to allow other people to feel safe too. I'm so proud of you. You you have changed so many lives. I know this. I know this. At the I'm getting verklempt. It's what Master Chrism I, would call a bliss moment. I, I, I thank you for your kind words. I really believe that we have these divine appointments where we need to show up somewhere. And the first thing we need to do is to hear those soul whispers inside ourselves and show up for ourselves. And then it becomes a lot more easy to have courage to show up with others, whether it's on a radio show, whether it's talking to a loved one about we're, how we're really feeling about what's going on, whether it's on the job. But I tell you, we bless so many people if we simply show up. Exactly. And that's why I call my radio show Radio Namaste, because I do honor the shining lunatic in each of us. Because even though I know at the end of the day, I'm like, ah, I'm not crazy. It's compatible insanity forever. You know, I, I, I add a little bit of humor into it. But this is not a humorous thing. This is what is happening to people today. We, you know, I'm going to step aside from my usual go-to of humor and sarcasm and just say, listen, if your heart is breaking and you don't know why, there are resources out there. Please find Eagle Spirit online. Look at her videos. You know, look... Listen to what she has to say and, if possible, attend her workshops. They will make a difference. She is authentic. She is genuine. She will show you that your heart is a beautiful thing, and if it's breaking, she'll show you why. I'm sitting here smiling, and in, in, in my head, I've got the Unity song playing in my head. <laughs> We're not alone. It's, it's okay. It is okay. okay, and I think more and more of us need to know this. Listen, I got like three minutes before I need to wrap up the show, so I need to give a shout-out to our sponsor, um, Alchemy Stones. But before I do that, one more time, Eagle Spirit, you're going to be in Sedona when? Um, the Soul Whispers in Sedona is happening May 21st to the 27th. There's one spot left in the wonderful, luxurious location that we've chosen for this event. Um, it's going to be really special because there's pineal gland activations, Atlantic, Atlantis um, golden light aura activations, land exploration, water weaving. It's really quite special. And then in June, for, for those who are in the Atlantic region um, or are able to get to Halifax, there's uh, going to be an Empath 101 kicking off on June 20th. That'll kick off the month-long program. I do travel all over the world sharing this program. So if there's a, a listener I know you have a lot of listeners over in Europe as well. Yes. If, if we need to create something there, just message me and we'll make it happen. This really is my life's mission. I want people to remember how wonderful they are and to celebrate that because um, I find it's helpful if you're a healer, but it's helpful no matter what you're doing to embrace your sensitivities and really own your power. It's time to own your power. Right. We are superheroes. We are. Well, Alchemy Stones has a selection of really incredible art for Father's Day. We got through Mother's Day, um, and he, uh, he, <laughs> 
they, them. Zen Master Ted is the alchemist actually behind Alchemy Stones. I wanted to give him a shout out because he's a super empath. He taps into vibrations and frequencies and energies around and then he puts these amazing and incredible symbols on these stones and it's more than just painting on rocks. It really is. Or it can be. I mean, you know, it depends on, on where your, your, you know, your process is, but get your dad a rock for Father's Day. Or, you know, for weddings or birthdays or your graduate, get them a rock. And mention Radio Namaste and you're going to get a free shipping in the continental United States. And, and our overseas listeners are going to get a 15% discount. Um, next week's guest is uh, Todd Helt. He's going to give us happy sparkles in our sunshine knot. <laughs> um, if you search for articles that will tell you that global warming is not happening, you're going to find articles that are going to tell you that global warming isn't happening. And that's going to make you feel better about yourself. But it really doesn't get you any closer to understanding the, the, the world. And in a way, global warming is just a really interesting case study in information literacy. And Todd Hell teaches a class on global warming uh, in Chicago uh, at, the, uh, at the college that he works for. He's a librarian and a writer. And uh, he's also a pretty decent friend. Uh, I've known him for years, but he's he's very serious about this, and I haven't seen him get serious about much uh, except for his family and his wife and, and maybe his a uh, couple of his novels. I think he actually wrote a screenplay, too, but he's very, very serious about this. And uh, so don't listen to the show if you're looking for more hop- you know, happy sparkles in your sunshine. Do listen to this show next week if you want your children and grandchildren to live. Giant shout out to Eagle Spirit for joining us today for an emergency session for uh, self-care for empaths. We'll see you next week. I'm out of here. Bye. Um.